Good morning. morning. It's good to see all of you on this beautiful uh, summer morning. It's a, a lovely, lovely day out there. Um, I would like to welcome everyone and uh, invite you into this time of quietude as um, we prepare our hearts and our minds for the entry of the Holy Spirit into our midst. Uh, so just take a moment to let all the busyness of the week and even the morning just to slide away and take a deep breath as you close your eyes and allow that spirit to come in. One, we thank you for your presence with us today. We thank you for coming upon each one of us with the breath of new life, the possibility that you have set before each one of us today. May our hearts, our minds, our ears be open your call and may we respond with love and compassion to all the directions you call us into. <clears throat> we pray all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ who teaches us to pray saying our Amen. Father who Amen. art in heaven hallowed be thy name Amen. thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Let us join together in singing Blessed Assurance, hymn number 319 in our praise hymn book, and we will sing all three verses.
are God's goodness comes from Sharon. And Sharon writes to us, um, she says, I shared with you last week the wonderful outcome of our sold out bake sale. I didn't share how it came about and how God is so amazing and good. Two weeks before the event, I still hadn't moved up here, and the fact we hadn't advertised was bothering me. Our wonderful sign painter and installer stepped up to the plate and the signs went up. It is too bad I couldn't get my times right, but soon our church sign worker at the same time as our signs. Now, who would come? Next problem. Who would come out to make pies on a holiday and even an anniversary and make cinnamon buns on a holiday? People from our wonderful congregation, of course, 22 pies were put together in our kitchen on a holiday and the people came. I had told God that for the first time I would be happy even if we only made 500. Well, that was not to be. Our God has blessed us with a wonderful supportive community. God is so good. God is good! All the time. And all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think our children are downstairs, so I'm going to have to do a young at heart. Uh, but I know that those of you who have farms, as I grew up on a farm, my mom and dad were farmers, you know what I'm referring to when I say fence jumpers and fence crawlers, right? You know what those are? Some of them. Okay, well, Dad and Mom had a mixed cabin and grain park. And fence crawlers and fence jumpers were the cows, we had a herper cows, were the cows that took a notion that the grass was greener on the other side of the fence, right? And so they would either leap the fence, believe it or not, or they would cr crawl through the barbed wire. Uh, I don't know, but they did it anyway. And, and so um, there were times um, that dad's cows would get out and they would wander off into our neighbors uh, fields, and then there were times when our neighbor's cows would get out and join our herd, and uh, all of the cows were, they were branded, so you know, and dad counted every cow up, and uh, so he knew when there was a stray in the yard, munching around and visiting with uh, the Hereford, and so he would uh, check out the brand and say, all right, and then he'd call our neighbor. So say it was Dan Belback. And he called Dan and he'd say, you know, Dan, I have one of your cows over here. Come on over, we'll have a cup of coffee and then we can get it rounded up. And so that's, Dan would do that. Dan would come over and him and Dad would sit down and uh, have a cup of coffee. And then they'd say, all right, let's get out and get that cow back home again, and that's what they do. And that's what good neighbors do. That's what good neighbors do. We do not get upset. We do not think differently about people um, if their animal gets into our yard or, or if they've accidentally hurt us or, or um, Whatever the reason, we do not get angry. We just welcome them and treat them as a good neighbor and resolve the problem. And so that is the way it was in our farming community all the time I grew up. 
and it was just neighbors helping one another. But uh, I'll tell you, if you haven't seen a cow manage to get its way through a barbed wire fence, you've missed something because they're pretty stubborn. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's have a prayer. Loving God, we thank you for all that you do for us and the neighbors that you place in our lives. There are neighbors near and afar, and we know that. And our call from you is to take care of each one of them. And so we thank you today for the many opportunities that we have each and every day to um, serve our neighbor with love and care and dignity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, our next hymn is hymn number 407 in our praise hymn book, Pass It On, All Three Verses. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. There you see, even we can make mistakes up here. 507. I missed a coffee, sorry. <laughs> scripture reading this morning is from Colossians chapter 1 verses 1 to 14. It can be found in the Pew Bibles if you're following us there on page 1233. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints. The faith and love that springs from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven 
and that you have already heard about in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. We learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord, and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I have a moment of quiet reflection. <laughs> lesson is from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, and can be found in the Pew Bibles at 1084. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. <clears throat> but he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus went to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took, took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, Go and do likewise. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Thank you, Marilyn. Let us join in singing hymn number 510. Lord, speak to me all four verses, and it is in our praise hymn.
just picture the individual in our gospel lesson this morning. Sitting down with Jesus over a cup of coffee at the local Tim Hortons. Hey, let's talk religion, Jesus. After a couple of opening rounds of discussion, he comes to a question that is sure to be good for at least an hour of stimulating dialogue. The question is, who is my neighbor? Jesus answered the question by telling a story, the story we all perhaps can recognize as a parable of the Good Samaritan. Through this story, Jesus answered the individual, conveying the meaning of, who is my neighbor? In the story, Jesus outlined several ways that human beings deal with one another. The first is characterized by robbers who beat up the man who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jesus said, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. That is one way humans can deal with others. We can beat them up. People who beat up others, either verbally or physically, operate on the concept of what is yours is mine. And I will get what I want any way I can, even violently. Abuse does not always have to be physical. Verbal abuse can sometimes be even more damaging and even longer lasting than physical abuse. Today we do not need to look very far to find people like this. We can find them in business suits calling us out of our life savings, as readily as we can find them in the dark shadows of night, with knives and guns. Regardless, they leave us with the feeling of being violated and traumatized as victims. Sadly, because of the abundance of news coverage, Many of us have become desensitized when we read or hear about robberies, murders, rapes, or domestic violence, and even the mass shootings that take place. It does not take a lot of imagination to know that the option of dealing with our neighbor by beating them up is as tragic in 2022 as it was in the days of Jesus. According to the story, another option of dealing with our neighbors is simply to ignore them. The religious leader who saw the injured man pass by on the other side. Maybe we need to give that person the benefit of the doubt. I know that when I am traveling anywhere across Canada, if I were to stop and help somebody on the side of the road, it could possibly lead to robbery, injury, and perhaps even death. We are warned 
time and time again, do not ever stop, especially on the freeway, to help anyone. Instead, help by calling for assistance. So perhaps the religious leaders have fear. Or perhaps they were just simply in a hurry. Maybe they were in a rush to do their religious rituals they were required to perform. But by ignoring their neighbor and passing by on the other side, they were in effect losing sight of the very reason they were performing the religious ritual. Always the performing of religious ritual is done to express our love for God and our love for humanity. And then to put this amazing gift of love and compassion into practice. That's something I think they forgot. The third alternative for dealing with neighbor is as suggested by the Samaritan's response, to stop and help them. Sometimes when we are asked to help our neighbor, we may be frightened or intimidated, even scared. Maybe we do not know what to do, or perhaps how to go about helping. The fact that Jesus used a Samaritan as a good guy in this story is quite remarkable. Samaritans were half Hebrew and half Assyrian, a mix of different nationalities, kind of like many of us here today. I have both English and Norwegian blood in my veins. Essentially, the Samaritans were Jewish in religious observances with a few little differences, especially in the observance of the law, laws that were so important to the Pharisees. Therefore, the Samaritans were looked down upon with disgust by the Jewish conservatives of that day. So what a story Jesus is telling. Here is an outcast Samaritan who has more compassion for someone who is hurting than the religious people of the church at that time. With whom in the parable do you most closely identify? We would all like to think of ourselves as the Samaritans. In reflection, however, many of us may be closer to the individual who prompted the story in the first place. We like to talk about religion. And we do a lot of that within the church. While careful and thoughtful discussion of religious issues is wise and very important, there does come a time when we need to roll up our sleeves and put our religion into practice. What do we profess? believe with our words? What do we need to make as our direction, our choices in life as we seek out 
the living presence of God in all that we do. Jesus' story does not contain a new definition of a neighbor. What Jesus did was to describe a quality of life that is dominated by love, compassion, and generous sharing. The bottom line is to love one another unconditionally. Is our neighbor of today a threat or an opportunity? Our response to that will be determined to the degree that we have the heart and will of the Samaritan. Jesus was saying to all who heard the parable and is still saying to us today, Go then and do the same. This is God's word for us this day. All thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and loving God, there are so many ways and opportunities for us to look around and see our neighbor in our living. We ask God that you give us the heart and the grace to move always with compassion and love towards our relationship with our neighbors. May we reach out with the care that you call us to, to make life better, to make life bearable in so many ways for different people throughout the world who are indeed our neighbors. We ask for your eyes of wisdom, your mind of knowledge to see what there is before us and allow us new and innovative ways to be a neighbor to one another. We pray as well this day, God, for our world, a world in which there are wars and indignities, homelessness, hunger, violence of all sorts, instead of ways in which we live in community and care. Be the heart and the mind of the leaders within our land that we may rise up as a people on your earth to care and live with each other responsibly and with the greatest of compassion. We pray for those caught in wars and violences and natural disasters. Lord, we ask that you be their source of strength and hope and peace. May they find comfort and calm in the midst of the storms that are ongoing in their lives. We also pray 
for your people of Morgan's Point and Corpus Relief United Churches. May we live our lives as your hands, your feet, your voice of Christ. May we reflect the love and compassion for all people in many circumstances. We now lift up to you prayer from the silence of our hearts. Let us now pray in silence. Thank you, God, for hearing and responding to these our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Our concluding hymn today is hymn number 562 in Voices United. That's the red hymn book. 562, and we will sing all five verses to Jesus Calls Us. this morning I would like to thank Karen for being our guest. Thank you so much Karen for being with us the last two weeks. So I would invite you to go into the world this day knowing you are children of God and you have been called to love and have compassion on each and every one you meet. And so go grateful and willingly and may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the faithful friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.